My earliest memory of my mother was her telling me to go away because she didn't want to deal with me. This was such a frequent occurrence, I started acting up in school because my social needs weren't being met at home, which started a cycle of shame and physical punishment until I didn't speak up in class anymore. I don't know what it's like to grow up in a happy, healthy, stable family, nor what it's like to have loving, engaged parents. A friend recommended I watch Bluey to understand what a normal family looks like, so what do I have to lose? First impressions are that I adore this art style. As a kid, I was obsessed with Australian Shepherds, and I know these are cattle dogs, but take a wild guess which colors I loved. Blue and red. Sort of feels like this show was made for child me. I absolutely love how the dad is engaging with his kids. He wants to play with them and be part of their lives. I spend my day watching people of all ages engaging with their smartphones more than with the people in their lives, so it's refreshing to see a good dad represented in media. Taking turns can be difficult. I like that he has different games for each child to make them feel special. I wonder who has come up with some of these games because a magic xylophone that freezes people doesn't seem like something a child would come up with on their own. It's also surprising to me that the mother and father haven't thrown away the xylophone yet because that's what happened to all my toys when my mother got tired of them. I recently learned that is a narcissist thing, so it's good to know that good parents don't just get rid of their child's possessions because they feel like it. The more I watch this, the more I think that the dad secretly likes to play these games despite his protests. He could have easily shaken off Bluey as she held him in place, but chose not to, even though he knew what was coming. The first freezing, when they put his fingers up his nose, was harmless enough, but when the girls said, let's get the pens, that would have been where the fun ended in my home. Oh, who am I kidding, it would have never started, but any mention of anything that could stain or break something would have ended the fun. There was always talk of, if you break, stain, ruin something, you'll replace it, even as a kid. I remember someone taking my house keys at school, and my mom put such dread in me, insisting I would have to pay to replace the locks and pay to have the keys made. I was 10, the only time I ever saw money was maybe on my birthday if I was lucky, so I have no idea what she would have forced me to do to pay for that lock, but luckily, my keys were found the next day. Oh, what a splendid mustache you have. I don't know how it is in Australia, but washable doesn't always mean washable. It's usually the dark colors that stain, so I'm wondering if the dad went to work with purple on his face for a few days after this. The Dalmatian coming down the street and hurriedly rushing away from the dad standing frozen in the yard was hilarious. Some people just don't get the seriousness of playing with your kids. I'll Louie, if you don't take turns with people, people won't take turns with you. You can either take turns, or I'll bring the xylophone to work with me. I'll freeze my boss. No. Well, you know what to do then. I'll see you later. Just make sure you unfreeze him for toilet breaks, okay? As someone who went to school to teach children, I like how the parents explain sharing. It's not just because they say so, they explain it so the kids understand. They can understand the concept of kids not wanting to play with them if they hog the toys and that their parents will take it away, which I chuckled at the I'll freeze my boss line. So being a toy hog has consequences that any kid can learn from. I also thought it was cute when the mom said to give dad some bathroom breaks. I like how he knows darn well where the kids are hiding, but goes away to get the jump on them, keeping them guessing and the game going longer. <laughs> you ding dongs were too busy squabbling. Praise! Look at this lovely new garden gnome. Ah, this is the perfect spot. Wait a minute. It's got a little bit of felt pen on the fingers. Better get the hose. <laughs> The way the bingo drives home what the mother and father were trying to say when she explains to Bluey how she hogs the toys and how it makes her feel makes the connection for Bluey and would help a lot of other kids understand too. I love how the show doesn't talk down to children and teaches lessons in normal ways. You don't have to cut away, look directly at the camera, and preach to make an impact on a child. The title of this episode is ominous enough as it is, but then dad is lifting Bingo up to sit on his nose and I'm getting the feeling that something bad is going to happen. Is dad going to throw out his back and need to go to the hospital? Oh, okay, false alarm. We're playing pretend hospital. Please lie here. Thanks, doctor. No, I'm the nurse. Oh, sorry. Thanks, nurse. And I need to know where I can find that background music because it just hit my obsessed bone. I guess that's a Google search for later. Hello, I'm the doctor. Hello, 
Doctor. My name is... Brave Boy. What was that? A needle! I love how Bluey comes out giving shots. Like, that is her only frame of reference for what doctors do. Considering just how many inoculations children get, this isn't surprising. Now, what's up? My belly hurts. Have you got a baby in there? No, I don't think so. No, let's do an x-ray on the big blue guy. Yes, Doctor. Hang on. I really don't think I have a... Ow! Bye! Good grief! Bluey deduces that dad's stomach ache is a baby in his stomach, which again is probably her only frame of reference for stomach problems because she was old enough to remember mom having bingo. It is quite adorable how bingo sympathizes with dad and tries to make him feel better and Bluey just keeps giving him shots. There is this undercurrent of how does a child know that during this whole scene. Bingo knows what an x-ray is, so did someone need one in the past and it was explained to the children? It was quite cute to see bingo drawing the x-ray herself and I have to say that looks better than anything I could draw. Oh yeah, you have a cat in your belly. How did it get in there? Did you eat one? No. They're probably through your belly button. Did they just set up a slide while you're asleep? just slide right in, you know? I was expecting to hear that dad snores and while he had his mouth open, a cat got in. I'm definitely getting the feeling that whoever made this show has children and knows exactly how their minds work. I would not be surprised in the least if some of these conversations and interactions came from real life experience. When Bluey pulled out the egg beaters, I laughed and said, what is she gonna do with that? You mean you're not even gonna put me to sleep first? Go to sleep, go to sleep. Okay, let's go! I don't know what I was expecting with the egg beaters, but it wasn't that. And then this completely goes off the rails. Now, let's get this cat out! Oh, I think I got it! Yeah. That's our cat! We're back here! I think there's supposed to be in there! I am howling at this point. Then out comes the giant inflatable hammer and I can't help but feel bad for the dad. First the needles, then the bandage, then the hammer, followed by the egg beaters and then the snap of the party hat. It's a wonder he isn't covered in bruises. Oh, I got a snail! Pull it! Ah! What happened? It bit me! That cat's not going anywhere! You mean we can't make him feel better? No, yeah, sorry, there's nothing we can do. That cat just won't come out. Oh, I thought I was going to feel all better. I'm sorry. That's okay. You tried your best. Leave it with me. Okay, nurse. <gasps> Wait a minute. I didn't see this before. I think he swallowed a mouse. And then the cat ran in after it. What if we lured the mouse out with some cheese? Then the cat would chase the mouse. Right out of my belly. I really like the depiction of problem solving and thinking outside the box with Bingo drawing another thing inside Dad, something she knows will help get the cat out of his stomach. So they use a piece of cheese and voila, out comes the mouse and the cat. This reminds me of the story there was an old lady who swallowed a fly and I have to say this is the cutest thing I've ever seen. I also like the cheeky needle in the butt at the end. Poor Dad, he says he feels all better but he's gonna feel that tomorrow. <laughs> And now we're on to Keepy Uppy, and has there ever been a more wholesome game bopping a balloon all over the house? I'm really quite surprised that the mom didn't tell the kids to go outside after Bingo almost knocked over a potted plant. I was really expecting something to break and the mom and dad to get mad and tell the kids to go outside before they break anything else. That was my experience as a kid. I always wondered why my family was so preoccupied with stuff. You shouldn't be a wrecking ball smashing into everything you see, but shaming kids for breaking something insignificant never sat right with me. If you want your nice things, put them where kids can't get them, like packed in a box until they're older. I love when they ask dad to make it harder and he takes that as a personal challenge. I laughed out loud when he came out with a leaf blower. I also really like that the world is slowly beginning to open up in the show. I know there aren't tons of characters, I've seen their pictures online, but getting 20 different characters dropped on you suddenly leads to being overloaded. Lucky, their next door neighbor gets into the same game of keepy uppy and I think maybe Lucky's dad needs to do some exercise if he pulls a muscle straight away. I leave open the possibility it's just for show to allow Lucky to shine. Looks like rain. It's all good. We can blow up another one. That was my last balloon. Oh. Did I make that a little too fun? Yeah, yeah you did. Sorry, Squirts. It's a hard one to get right. You know, I think we've got one last balloon left. I 
I thought it was really sweet. After the balloon pops, the dad turns into a balloon and flies around making that deflating sound until he collides with the family. I also noticed that the animators were very careful to animate dad not squishing the children, that he's still in control even though he's being silly. I noticed a few little touches like that and it feels like a lot of forethought was put into this show. All right, kids, time to tidy up. Oh, mom. Hey, bingo. Let's get daddy's robot to do it. Yeah. It's time to clean up the thing that kids hate the most. Well, maybe a little less than vegetables. Yes, small stock. I love that dad is eating out of a container and how he dramatically shovels more quickly into his mouth, hides the container and spoon, but there's that little bit on the floor. That is oddly specific and has to be someone's personal experience. I imagine it can be quite difficult to eat a full meal with two energetic kids. We need you to do something. Come with us to the playroom. Yes, small stock. Actually, carry us to the playroom. Yes, Master. Uh, we have to run boogie there. I want to commend Dad for being able to navigate all those toys on the ground without looking. I'm super clumsy, so I'd step on everything. Daddy Robot, we order you to tidy up the playroom. I'm absolutely surprised that Dad is doing the cleaning up for his kids. What's the plan to get them to clean up, Dad? Daddy Robot, we never want to tidy the playroom ever again. Never again. Never again. You understand? Yes, Master. Mm -hmm. Recalculating objectives. What are you doing, Daddy Robot? Following Master's orders. Oh, they gave him a loophole. I love how he just dropped everything back on the floor, setting the room back to exactly how it was before he started cleaning. Smart. You two are the reason Playroom is always untidy. If I throw you in wheelie bin, Playroom will always be tidy. And then you will never have to tidy Playroom ever again. If you get rid of the kids, then the mess is stopped. Genius. When I was a kid, if you were told to clean up, you cleaned up. You didn't argue or do anything other than immediately cleaning or you met mom's wrath and it wasn't a flip-flop. Ah! He's malfunctioning. I love Bluey's quick thinking to use water on Daddy Robot, but it has unintended consequences of making him malfunction. I'll try my best. These circuits are badly damaged. This malfunction means that they have to turn him off and fix him, which mom is ready to help with. Daddy robots don't usually go crazy like that. We ordered Daddy robot to tidy the playroom for us. That's when he tried to throw you in the wheelie bin? Yeah. Daddy robots will always find the easiest way to do a job. Just like kids. <laughs> I love how she tells them that daddy robots find the easiest way to do something just like they did, thus teaching them the lesson that the easiest way isn't the best way to do something. Hello, daddy robots. Hello, master. What are my orders? Follow us. No. We order you to relax, daddy robot. This feels like a robot dream. I really like the moment at the end when mom and dad are sitting down watching the lesson that they taught the girls sink in and they share a kiss. It's adorable to see the girls go ooh and not scream yuck or something like that. I believe that shows emotional maturity that daddies and mommies do that to show they love each other. This little game the kids are playing, I'm not familiar with, but it reminds me a bit of Mother May I, where you ask someone playing mother if you can take certain movement actions like walking a number of steps, hopping, skipping, etc. The first one who gets to mother wins and then becomes the new mother. I remember when I went to a babysitter, the babysitter's own kid would do things like this to get her way and win every game. What shadow is? All the shadowy grassy bits are the land, and all the bits in the sun is the sea. You can't touch the water, or you get bitten by a crocodile. And we have to get from here, to the picnic blanket. <laughs> 
I love the ingenuity and creativity to create their own game, Shadowlands, and to come up with rules, even if Coco doesn't want to follow them. This teaches children that in the real world, rules are rules and you have to follow them even if you don't like it. I like all the tiny problems the kids have to get over and that they put their brains together and help each other. Early fostering of problem solving and creativity is a good way to get their brains thinking outside the box and coming up with creative ways to fix problems. The ending is where I think it falls flat. I would have rather seen Bluey and the others come up with a different way to get across the fake water other than just a cloud flying over saving them. Maybe Snickers figures out a solution to their problem with a nearby umbrella, using it to shade the kids and giving him a moment to shine despite his tiny legs. I really enjoyed seeing the new game at the end and Bluey saying Coco always makes it easier for herself, only to be thwarted by Coco changing the playbook. I thought that was really cute and shows that people can change if you tell them something is bothering you. I missed out on that childlike wonder of the weekend, all this time to play and do whatever you want. I never got to experience that as a kid because my mom worked the weekends and she often had to go into work unpaid to do certain tasks. My weekends were filled with sitting at a workplace waiting for her to finish or home completely alone with a list of chores to do. I really like seeing the parents taking turns so they could get the stuff they wanted to do done during the weekend. It's not just one parent taking care of the kids or doing the housework, both do it equally. Mom goes off on a run and dad watches the kids. He wants to see the cricket match, so he shushes the kids for a moment to hear it on TV, but then it's back to playing with his kids. I like how TV and social media is part of the world, but it doesn't take over family time. I know what it's like to be ignored by your parent because they don't want to deal with you or because they prioritize their needs over yours. It's not fun and leaves you with serious self-esteem issues. If I'm not important enough to my parent, then I'm not important to anyone. Again, I love the little things like Bingo holding the hand railing and taking the steps one at a time, just like a real child would do. Bingo is what, three, four? So she isn't as confident in her footing and stairs as say dad or Bluey. I really appreciate those little details. It makes the world feel more believable and real. I have to say the most beautiful thing I've seen in this show is that shot with the walking leaf on Bingo's nose. The level of detail and animation took my breath away. And when Bingo can't share that moment with her dad, I felt a little sad for her. I'm sure something like that would seem insignificant to most parents, but kids see the world differently and want their parents to share their experiences with them. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I'm sure some people would think the dad has nothing to apologize for. He was busy, but you know what? Busy just doesn't cut it. Your child only experiences certain things once, and if you're too busy to be there for them, then what does that tell your child? I'm glad to see children's cartoons have come a long way from Caillou and crap like that. If it helps even one parent understand their child or be a better parent, then I think the show is worthwhile. If you want more videos on cartoons, check out this video.